In today's Inside, a somber anniversary took place in Hiroshima. Thousands stood in silence in the city's Peace Park to mark the 69th anniversary of the first atomic bomb to be dropped on Japan. The mayor wants world leaders to visit his city so that they can see firsthand that nuclear weapons are, quote, as he put it, absolute evil. He called for governments worldwide to stop using nuclear weapons and to work toward a new security framework based on trust and dialogue. The bombing there marked the first time a nuclear device had been used in warfare and triggered a long-running arms race. The bomb, codenamed Little Boy, was developed in a super-secret location, present-day Los Alamos. The site of the U.S. state of New Mexico ballooned in size over the years, and today the U.S. spends billions of dollars there designing and researching nuclear weapons. As CCTV Sean Caleb's reports, critics say it's a waste of money under the cover of national defense. It could be any small town carved out of the rough terrain in the southwestern United States. But Los Alamos has its place in history secure. It all started here. As World War II raged, the U.S. government lured scientist Robert Oppenheim and legions of other brilliant scientists to build the world's first nuclear bomb. Folksy home movies helped document work on the effort that was codenamed the Manhattan Project. This is what Los Alamos looked like back then. An important landmark right in the middle of everything is Ashley Pond. This is Ashley Pond today. 70 years after ushering in the atomic age, Los Alamos and nuclear weapons remain intimately intertwined. Instead of the Manhattan Project, today it's the Los Alamos National Lab, a sprawling facility that employs 9,000 people, not terribly far from here. What frustrates critics is that facility remains shrouded in secrecy. They're in the fear marketing business. They need a cold war. They need arms, if not, if they're not arms racing with someone else, they need, uh, they need to arms race with themselves. This thing right here, and you can detonate a bomb in a container. Greg Mello heads a watchdog organization called the Los Alamos Study Group. I can't tell what I'm seeing here. In the name of national security, what goes on at Los Alamos National Lab, or LANL, is top secret. I don't see this. They got it blacked out. The LANL budget is close to $2 billion a year, and about three quarters of that money is spent on nuclear weapons research. In an era that is supposed to be characterized by dismantling nuclear weapons, Mello says, think again. All told, the United States has between seven and 8,000 nuclear weapons, including those that are slated for disarmament. In the arsenal, so-called, let's say 4,600, 4,500. Far more than any other nation. China, uh, on the order of, I should know this, uh, but I would say 300, um, of which about 25 could reach the United States. You can't see the Los Alamos National Lab from the town. And that is by design. And you can't miss the effect it has on this community. 40% of the land in the city is owned by LANL, and the lab funds a full 80% of the county's operating budget. They are the single largest landowner in the entire county. Despite the fact LANL scientists work with high-level radioactive materials, and much of that waste is still stored on site, you won't find a chorus of nuclear critics. The majority of the residents understand the mission of the lab and uh, support it because they've chosen to work for it. Uh, so we don't have a lot of um, what you might anticipate with detractors for the lab in our, our local community. Within this top secret site, the mission includes designing new nuclear weapons, but analysts say an overwhelming majority of LANL's $2 billion budget has scientists researching how the aging U.S. arsenal would perform if it was forced into use. A colossal waste of money and resources, according to Mello and other critics. Weapons people who used to be running the lab agree with us. The lab is twice as big as it needs to be. And so we'd like it to be half as big as it is. In the interest of our national defense, LANL management resists efforts to cut spending and can always rely on two crucial words, national security. 
More than 70 years after this, another enduring legacy of Los Alamos remains secrecy. And Sean Caleb is uh, joining us now. Secrecy, not a lot of transparency, it doesn't look like. Uh, twice as big as they should be, he says. Uh, but, but there's more to the story. And you're going to give us a little bit more, another peek tomorrow and another aspect. Of yeah, ours. tomorrow we're actually going to head down uh, about four hours south of uh, Los Alamos to a place called WIP. It's the Waste Isolation Pilot Plant. It's there, a massive underground storage area designed to hold all the nuclear waste from the United States. For the last 15 years, they've been bringing it there. A lot of people don't know about this. They now have 171,000 55-gallon cans mm. of nuclear waste buried there. But in February, there was an explosion. One of the cans ruptured. Uh, the area has been contaminated. The site has been shut down since then. And right now, there's nowhere to store nuclear waste in the U.S. It's going to be a bigger and bigger problem. How do you decontaminate an, a salt mine that is now carrying 171,000, let's put this in perspective, 1,000 uh, 55 uh, barrel drums of nuclear waste? That's fascinating stuff. We're looking forward to that. Thanks so much, Sean.